Yeah. That sounds like a, 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 like a Northern Ontario TV series, like Between Two Lakes. Oh, that is good. Oh, that is good. Exactly. So, <laughs> Between Two Lakes, starring Gordon Lightfoot and Brian Orser. So is really like Brian Orser's from Aurelia? Aurelia? Brian Orser's from Aurelia. Gordon Lightfoot's from Aurelia. It's um, a cultural mecca. It's a cultural mecca featuring Stephen Le Aurelia. Leacock the Drunk. Oh, Stephen Leacock. I don't know who Stephen Leacock is. He, uh... He's a drunk. He, he's Are we live? Oh, he yeah, was, he was. Oh, we're, we're live. live. Oh, oh, sorry. Geez. Okay, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Welcome back to Jesus TV viewers. It is a um, off schedule Camera Store TV yes. live episode today. You mean it's not Saturday morning? It's not Saturday what? morning. It but this not. came out, and we're very excited yes. about this. this what is, is this? The Panasonic GH5S. Yep. Um, you guys know we've been shooting with the GH5 for about a year now. Uh, love the camera, so this is the low light alternative, but I haven't shot with it very much. Very excited. I mean, we've got Jordan Drake here, of course, from the show. I'm just going to basically sit here and do nothing. This is Chris uh, Nichols. Yeah, will because be a this is not a photography camera. But we have Tyler Knight from uh, Night Vision Media. Tyler, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me, for guys. And Tyler, you've been playing with the GH5S for quite a few weeks now. Yeah, so I've had the camera for three weeks. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. The image quality is fantastic. I mean, it is a low light camera. It is a cinema camera that fits in the size of your hands. That's Very pure cool. and pure. Very cool. cool. And, and Tyler, why, yeah, let's let's play your real. So why did they why did they give you a camera, Tyler? Uh, they gave me a camera because I've always shot with the Panasonic cameras. Actually, um, as an organic thing, I've shot with the GH1, two, three, four, five, five S. Uh, I love the system, and uh, yeah, I love uh, putting it through some tests. So I actually just went to Banff uh, a couple days ago and uh, went on a night walk through Johnston Canyon. So cool. this is a uh, this is a nice little teaser. Yeah, yeah let's roll that, we can um, and then we can talk through the video. image quality here in a second. Switch me. And are we up? What's up everybody? I'm pretty excited today to be taking the Panasonic Lumix GH5S out tonight to Johnston Canyon in Banff, Alberta. So it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, and I uh, can't wait to show you some of the footage. <laughs> Obviously, so we're looking at anywhere from 640 up to uh, 8,000 ISO, depending on oh. kind of where the headlamps were at the time. So uh, we apparently just deafened a bunch of people. Okay. Yeah. With the um, uh, with the audio from the video. Oh, way too loud. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Sorry guys. Sorry, guys. My yeah. voice is. Uh, hopefully that's all. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of this, we'll just talk over top. Yeah, we're not gonna have any more. Audio that was the last on one. The <laughs> I'll just talk really loud to keep that. But that volume up. But let's right off the top talk about how they're pulling this off. So they've reduced the resolution of the sensor. Yes, that's, the, that's one of the big changes, right? Brand new. I guess it's technically an 11 megapixel sensor. It's an 11, over, 11 megapixel sensor, exactly. But effectively um, 10. Yep, so what that does basically, it allows the photo sites on the sensor to be much larger, um, in, in turn, gathering more light to the sensor. Um, did also, you notice the low light performance? The, lo the low light performance is massively better. Um, I mean, I've used the GH5 for a long time now, and I'm comfortable using it up to 6400. Some people say that it, its limit is 1600 clean. This thing I'm finding to be very, very clean up to 6400, um, and usable for me up to 12,800. Wow. So it's a, it's a massive upgrade. That is obviously mainly because of the small sensor, but also bringing the tech from the EVA1, which is the dual native ISO. So you're getting right. dual native ISO of 160 and 800. Um, the cameras that we're currently using have a, a lower ISO of 200 right now. I believe the 160 is coming later. Right. Um, but I mean, it's it's huge to be able to use 160 or 200 as your low ISO, but also 800 and have the same grain pattern and very low uh, low right. noise. Nice dynamic range as well. Yeah, yeah, I find with whenever we're looking at these log things, it's always a back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like if you're doing interior stuff or whatever, you always want that high native ISO, but it can drive you crazy when. Yeah, Ooh, I want hot chocolate right now. When we were out with the A7S2, it was awful. Um, you know, we're constantly <laughs> stacking NDs because we want that exactly really great. Oh yeah. Um, you know, when we're out in good light, you'd have to put on like a five stop. Exactly, you want that depth usable. of field too, right? So, so this is great. You get kind of the best of both worlds with it. And yeah, it is cool that they've brought that over from the EVA 1. That was mm -hmm. one of the most exciting things about the EVA when we first saw it, is just having this ability to do low ISO. Mm -hmm. uh, back to us, guys. All right. We're back. So, 
Um, so now there is a compromise to do this, and that's the other major thing is they've taken the stabilizer off of this. And now they I have. don't know if that's because it's the multi-aspect sensor, uh, which we can certainly talk about. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Heating issues or just this new sensor design. Yeah. But, um, I mean, let's let's take some time to talk about that. I mean, when you first got this camera, Tyler, and you mm -hmm. open up the box, you said you were playing with it. The first thing you were like. What's missing here? You were that was the big thing. You were pretty upset. It was the yeah. inbuilt body stabilizer. But you know what it is though? Like I've since I've shot with all the Panasonic cameras previous to like the GX85 for me was like, oh my god, stabilization! This is the craziest thing ever. I don't need to use a tripod for weddings anymore. This is this is amazing. But I can I think we've been spoiled with that because that's such a new technology still. Right. Where in the cinema world do you see internal stabilization? It's just not a thing. And the reason is I think is heat heat dissipation. I mean you don't have that same thing when the camera is floating. It can't move off of the sensor. Um, also, they did a poll with the, the shooters who basically have designed this camera, and they said, look, we're going to put this on a rig, we're going to put this on a stabilizer, we don't need the stabilization, right. it's going to affect our image. And again, having um, a, like the stabilizer internal is going to increase the noise it, because of the heat. So, I mean, that's just right. a, one more way to reduce the noise in this camera. So, and let's keep in mind, you still have GH5, exactly. if you want the inbuilt stabilizer, exactly. absolutely. So I mean, it's it's going to work very well hand in hand with the GH5 for me, um, and those shooters who are you going to be using the, the EVA1? It's going to be a great little B camera to use on car mounts and places where you can't fit the EVA1. It's going to be a great little uh, B camera or uh, an A camera for uh, for some shooters. Okay. Yeah, very cool. Now the other thing that's kind of sweet with this is they've thrown in vlog with it. Uh, yeah, with mm -hmm. the GH5 it was an optional one, and this to me is amazing because I work in a store, and the number of times I've spent 45 minutes on the phone with someone telling oh, them how to install <laughs> vlog onto their new Panasonic, so many times. So this is great because uh, that was a huge painful process, but this is also a camera that is designed to be shot more in log. Mm -hmm. With the uh, GH5, their thinking was really we're going to make it hard for people to get access to this because you need to know what you're doing. With with log with exactly. the camera. Uh, with this, we're certainly seeing, and a lot of the time with log, your bottom shadow layers are extremely noisy. Um, but if you're shooting this, especially at the 200, what we are For seeing sure. is 200, uh, those are really clean. So there's less of a learning yeah, exactly. curve in terms of, you can expose towards the middle and get a usable yep. image out of it, which I don't think is necessarily the case with the GH5. Also keep in mind too, like this camera, like the GH5 is geared towards hybrid shooters. It's geared towards cinematographers as well. But it is a hybrid camera. It's meant for stills, right. it's meant for video. And cinematographers just happen to go to it because it's the best in its field for what it offers, right? Whereas this camera is a cinematographer's camera, I feel. Right. Um, it's got all the features. It's got V-Log installed because people are shooting it with it know exactly how to expose for log and use it, right? I mean, on a side point, we should mention, just, just quickly, sure. I'm going to steal it because, of course, I like to do photography and, you know, videos <laughs> of course. for me. But uh, people should appreciate, as a photography camera, uh, there is one major improvement, and that is low light performance. Big time. In photography. Absolutely. I mean, GH5, we were kind of disappointed. The video was way better in low sure. light than the earlier cameras, but the photography image quality at high ISO is basically the same. So this does give a substantial improvement to low light quality for still shooting. Absolutely. Albeit at a very reduced resolution. It is, and right. again, for what you're delivering, you have to keep that in mind. If you're yeah. delivering for web resolution stuff, 10 megapixel is going to be more than right. enough for almost everything. And the trade-off to have that low ISO or high ISO performance is massive. I mean, as a wedding photographer too, who's fully switched over to the system now, I can see this being huge for my indoor reception shooting. The autofocus is going to be better in low light. Um, you can raise the ISO much, much higher for clean images. And with the addition of 14-bit RAW now. Right. So we're going to have row, so much cool. flexibility in post. And that might be interesting, you know, for, for people who want to shoot photography, get the most dynamic range possible on a micro mm -hmm. four-thirds camera. I could certainly also say uh, autofocus is basically the same. I mean, if you look sure. at the specs, it's like ever so slightly Absolutely. It's like slower, point, point it's, one of a, an EV faster it, and better in low it's light. It's effectively the same. Yeah, it does focus to minus five sure. EV now, which is pretty interesting. Um, frame per second rate still 12 frames per second, yep. but you actually get a slightly slower frame per second rate if you're doing continuous autofocus. Yeah, exactly. So there's a few changes to the photography-based part of it. I could see this being really effective for astrophotography. Big time. In the micro four-third world where people are basically left. Out yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you slap the 12 millimeter 1.5 on this thing and yeah you're, you're comfortable shooting up to probably 8,000 slapped a little bit of noise reduction on it yeah. and you're getting some really clean Astro stuff. They've got this new night vision screen now so kind of a la Pentax. I'm sure we got some questions yes. here. Uh, <laughs> red screen supposed to reduce uh, problems with night vision and losing your yes. night vision. Also a 20 times punch and magnifier yep. so trying to get the stars focused that'll be very Yeah the pinpoint, well. uh, the pinpoint focus was great. Um, the night mode I just want to talk about that briefly. Mm -hmm. In the Johnston Canyon video, I mean, it's, it was pitch black. We just had hand lamps, right? right? So I actually did use that. This is a, a good test of using that. I, I didn't use it at first, and I found pulling my eyes away from the viewfinder, 
like it was it was out. very very hard to like <laughs> to to re kind of work my eyes to the darkness. So I switched onto the red mode, and immediately I was moving back and forth between. It was it was a comfortable. comfortable. I didn't have to re uh, adjust my eyes to the darkness. So Astros it is a Astros, usable thing. They're also gonna like the live view boost, where it Big actually time. boosts the exposure. You can yep. really see what you're gonna get before you're actually exactly. Shooting, so. so I mean, to be able to focus on the stars. Is, is a huge thing. There's some nice uh, nice options there for photographers, but I would say fairly specialized. I think GH5 mm -hmm. is still going to be the primary the go camera, but there you go. And now I will shut up and I will let you guys talk for the rest of this time. Well, on that topic, the one thing we really <laughs> want to test is, yeah, whenever we see something like the Sony a7S, that's this low light monster, Sure. specifically when we're talking about photo, what we found with that camera is if you shot with an a7R2 and just threw some noise reduction on it, it was effectively the same image. Effectively the same So image. we do want to test that out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And that's something we'll be doing in the future with our full review. Absolutely. So I'd like to quickly talk about what dual ISOs are, because there's right. a lot of misconceptions out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, people are saying, you know, that it's going to be, they're saying in the dual ISO, you've got 51,200 as an option. Does that mean it's perfectly clean? And you've got to understand what dual ISO means. It doesn't mean that you've got the exact same image no, in two different no. ISOs. There is more noise when we're shooting at 800 ISO compared to at 200. What we've got right now is 200 ISO. Sure. Um, but we have the same dynamic range. That's, that's a the huge advantage. thing. Um, so if I'm shooting an interior, go to an exterior on that, we're not suddenly going to see clipped highlights all over the place right. like we would typically see with a camera that's shooting log. And that's the color the shift advantage. as well is a massive one. Um, and if you're not shooting in the log mode, a lot of this is less relevant because the cameras were already doing this beforehand because mm -hmm. uh, you're working with less dynamic range. But for filmmakers, things like that, it's wonderful. It's you know you can kind of treat the log pull down as having a couple ND filters in your bag. Big time. I mean, in video, when your shutter speeds are generally fixed and, and not adjustable, I mean, it's nice to just have any tool you can to adjust light levels yep. as you need to. So this is just another Again, tool. I'm welcome to it. <laughs> yeah, that a videographer can have to get the light levels they need given this the situation. Right. Let's jump on some questions because I can see Ron. Ron wants to talk. Ron, Ron do you want to talk? Do you have uh, to say? The internet would like to ask a couple Please? of questions. Please. Uh, Wino ISBS. So there's IBIS. Wino the irritable camera does not have irritable bowel syndrome, so it has IBIS. So um, there's a several reasons for that that I've been told. Um, the main one is that they've asked filmmakers who designed this camera what they thought, what they wanted in a camera, and the main things were uh, that they would be putting this on a rig. This is going to be on a jib. It's going to be on a stabilizer. It's going to be on a tripod. Um, again, it's a trade-off for what they're offering in the camera. If you had IBS, ISBS, <laughs> IBIS, 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 yeah, IBIS, okay, IBIS. Okay. <laughs> IBIS. This is the easy one to say. So IBIS, um, again, you're floating the sensor too, so the heat that is generated on the sensor is not going to be able to dissipate as easily. Um, also, too, it makes the camera lighter. It makes the camera um, less expensive as well. I mean, what True. they've crammed into this camera, it's we know the price now. It's adding that the the IBIS is going to increase the price as well. So I mean, it's, there's a lot of different factors that come into it. Um, I personally. I wasn't happy with the choice initially. Now knowing what this camera can do, I'm happy to slap this on my Ronin M and get right. the same shots that I would. I mean, they're really going for low light performance. They are, and that's the thing. That's the big thing. If you gotta get rid of the heat dissipation, that's definitely that's how you do it. And again, useful way to do it. Any little bit of thing that's gonna reduce the noise is welcome by me. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and I do think this is a camera that's very specifically, like you said, a cinematographer's it camera. Is. Um, if you're a hybrid shooter, uh, or if you're doing the kind of stuff that we're doing a lot of the time, mm -hmm. where we're running around in the field, uh, you know, we love the Ibis because I don't have to pack, exactly. a, uh, pack a monopod or a tripod with me. The GH5 still definitely has its place. I still think yeah. it's the most well-rounded camera. Big time. In much the same way, I, we just keep going back to the Sony A7S series, but that's really what I'd compare it to. That was a camera. I would recommend for low light filmmakers mm -hmm. with some stability. And make no mistake, you can still throw image stabilized lenses on these cameras exactly. and then you get some stability assistance as well. Absolutely. Yeah. What else we got, Rondo? Well, There's so many good rigs out there. Like the whole comparison to the A7S series. Yeah, and, were, right? so. and again, thing to bear in mind with this is I'm going to throw up a couple yeah. examples of mm -hmm. stuff comparing it to the GH5, but this is still pre production firmware on these, yeah. so we're not going to do you know, a shootout Super against some of the other cameras, <laughs> yeah. uh, things like that. I am very curious. I'm 
The S2 I would still expect to be the king of low light performance, but I'd love to compare this against a 6300. For sure. 6500, because yeah. it looked very similar, and I love those cameras for low light shooting. And that's what we have to keep in mind. I mean, it's it's not a full frame sensor. No, it's not a full it's, frame sensor. It's a micro four thirds sensor, which in the past, like comparing to the GH1 that I started with, I could use it up to maybe 600 ISO or yeah. 640. Yeah. And you then you get the line to, and the, yeah. the fixed pattern noises, right? <laughs> but the fact that we're able to use these micro four thirds sensor with these high ISOs now is, is oh, yeah. pretty incredible. And you know, there's always talk about, oh, micro four thirds, it's never going to be a viable system because you can't get the low light performance, but exactly. obviously you can. So you can, I mean, absolutely. It's nice to see that Panasonic's putting the engineering yep. and, the, and the science to really make this something that's possible for us. Exactly. Well, and you look at uh, a lot of people will say jumping up to APS-C or Super 35 in the filmmaker's world mm -hmm. is a one-stop size advantage yeah, exactly. in terms of your pixel pitch. Um, but we've got a one-stop improvement. I would say the 800 ISO on this looks honestly a little better than the 400 native ISO, especially if you're shooting long yeah, exactly. on the original GH5. Throw a speed booster on there as well. And, and you're increasing that yeah. just monumentally, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah, you're getting extremely good low light performance. And bear in mind, if you're doing a lot of low light shooting, don't shoot log. This is a really common mistake for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Uh, we use the Cine Like V profile primarily, and it's been mm -hmm. spectacular in low light. And this is yeah, a step above. In our full review, I've got some low light band footage where you'll be able to see that, and that's cool. coming up in the near future. Anything else, Ron? Uh, I'm gonna put on bowling footage while you go. Ron's huh. doing a pretty sweet mic swing right now. Yeah. You can't bowling. see that behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, this was actually from a, uh, a fundraiser we had in a really a home, of go home of Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so plug that when I can. Uh, it was an ugly sweater Gordon bowling Lightfoot party. Was born Gordon was bowling Lightfoot alley? was bowling oh. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for it. Um, so again, this was all shot in uh, vlog as much as possible. Nice. Um, that was obviously, uh, I think that was Rec 707, or like seven, uh, 709, 709, I should say. I um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it was pitch black in that place. It's all lit by black light. So, I mean, we're talking very low. That was there. That was at like ISO 12,800. And it's, there's some noise in it, but for what I'm shooting, this is like production stuff. It's event highlights. Yeah. This is not a, a, an issue for me. And I want to ask you here too, Tyler. Um, we've taken the Evo 1 out. We've seen also some mm -hmm. samples of it in low light. And people sure. were very impressed with the low performance on that camera, but also uh, that the color still remained uh, very good, very true. Absolutely. What did you feel about the color profile? Did you notice a difference here with the GH5 or I the did. low light? I um, did. Again, that's the big thing. When you're using the GH5, um, again, it's a great camera. When you're using V-Log, it's less noticeable. But as you go up in ISO, your color does start to shift when you get kind of past 6400. Mm -hmm. You lose a little bit of saturation. The color doesn't render the same as it normally would. With this here, we're getting up to, again, 6400, 12,800 before those shifts start to happen. Right. So to have that usable color and that usable uh, noise up to that is, is a, again, a huge difference for me. Four thirds rumor is chiming in. Oh, uh, hey guys. Uh, What's asking up? Asking why the multi aspect sensor? Why the multi aspect sensor? And why not on the GH5? <laughs> I mean, well, take that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a combo package question. Okay. I mean, we're not the engineers on mm -hmm. this, but I think yeah. that multi-aspect sensor might have something to do with the in-body image stabilization question. Absolutely. Um, so I think the reason they put that in there again is to match the same sort of resolution when you're doing uh, different aspect ratios, of course, as opposed to subsampling from the, the sensor and, right. and scaling it down. It's just different crops of the sensor giving you the same resolution. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's more of a photography-related thing. Um, I mean, the only thing is maybe using anamorphic, you're going to get the same resolution when you're shooting on an anamor anamorphic lens. But again, it's a bigger size sensor, so maybe that's another part as to why they couldn't put the, uh, the IBIS into it as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think the multi-aspect sensor as well is something with the GH2. That was uh, their last kind of popular was, yeah. crossover camera right. for photographers. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think this is an acknowledgement to that. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's a low resolution sensor, so the multi-aspect lets you stretch that out yeah, a little exactly. bit. Exactly. And that's why we're also seeing things like the 1 by 85 aspect ratio. Sure. It, you can still do it. If it was a 10 megapixel non-multi-aspect um, ratio sensor, it wouldn't be you available. wouldn't physically be able to get 4096 by 20... One sixty. <laughs> Twenty one sixty. Yeah. And Jordan, why, why don't you just quickly, <laughs> Jordan, why don't you just quickly talk about uh, the difference between the GH five S and the GH five in terms of anamorphic use? Jeez. Oh. Hold on, that's that's a heavier question. You're <laughs> not going to talk quickly on that. One. <laughs> okay, so talk, talk. I don't talk know. Talk as long as you need on, to, very on, quickly. <laughs> First, was yeah. that video spec? The one that we just showed. Sorry. The one that we just showed was that video spec, like right out of the the the, uh, the bowling yeah. one. Yeah. Um, that was a mix of vlog graded with the the uh, very cam profile, okay. as well as the uh, Rec. Seven hundred nine. Seven hundred nine like. Yeah. yeah. All right. And um, 
right quick, uh, dynamic range, how does this stack up against the GH5? It's very similar. I think we're getting about an extra stop at least out of it just because of the increased, um, like the lower size sensor. Right. We're, we're pulling a lot more from that. Um, I think, again, I haven't done any of the scientific tests yet. That's going to be kind of after oh. this week. Oh. But what do we have on screen <laughs> right now, Jordan? Well, yeah, we're going to look at some samples here. And again, you know, we are going to do a review on these cameras. We are going to test sure. what's the dynamic range. Are we really getting better uh, dynamic range for, yeah. for stills as well as video? We want to see that. 14 bit RAW, is that really going to make a big difference? Sure. We want to see yeah. that. Basically, what I've seen so far, looking at my way of forms, we have the same dynamic range as we did with the GH5, but those bottom shadow layers, especially if you shoot the 200 IS, well, mm -hmm. what I'm getting is 200, what'll be 160 <laughs> apparently. Uh, those are much cleaner, much more usable, exactly. and you can stretch them a little bit. The deepest shadows on the GH5, uh, a lot of the time you'd see a lot of weird color shifts and yeah, stuff exactly. like that. It's, yeah, much more solid. Yeah. But let's jump over to the screen over here. I did a, few, a few quick tests here. Um, so now that we're over there, this is 3200 ISO in the 709 like, which is generally mm -hmm. what I use for low light shooting. Yeah, just a screen when, grab from that. When I'm sure. not working with a big, um, a lot of contrast in it. And what you'll see here, uh, we're going to freeze this and then we're going to punch in a little bit, is the color's much nicer on the GH5. But on top of that, there's a lot more detail and a lot less the noise. GH5S. Uh, GH5S, the GH5S. The GH5S, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you're yeah, seeing a massive difference. Look there. at the zipper there, yeah. I would say over a stop difference uh, comparing those two, which is what we'd expect. Um, the other thing I really wanted to test is on the GH5, we took a big low light hit when we shot in 10 bit. Um, you know, again, not a full stop, but definitely like, you know, I'd say over maybe two thirds of a stop difference mm. uh, in terms of how much noise we saw. Uh, I wanted to see if that was the case, and we are in the GH5S. In mm -hmm. the GH5S, and we are still seeing that, but it's better controlled with this. Okay. So, you know, I've always said for dynamic range, 10 bit for low light, 8 bit. That does look like it's still the case with sure. this. Mm -hmm. But if you find yourself in a pinch doing that same thing, uh, then it's more the 10 bit's strong. more usable. Say exactly. you're shooting something outdoors and you quickly jump inside yep. for a shot, no need to go in and switch your recording format sure. like we were seeing before. Uh, other technical thing, uh, and we just have a quick punch in there for you to see that. Rolling shutter is spectacular. It's insanely on good. Yeah. Uh, We're almost is, almost at global shutter I'm levels. Puke. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, so you can see some examples there. I'll back it up for a single frame there. Caitlin looks scared. Uh, yeah, you could see I was whipping it very so fast, fast there. And a very, very slight scan. Yeah, it's very, that. very close. Um, you can see, yeah, going along this straight line here. Barely moving across mm -hmm. the frame. Mm -hmm. um, now you're still going to run into issues with things like flashes and stuff like that. Sure. But for most day-to-day -day use, this is awesome. And I, I mean, it is kind of a shame because we don't have that IBIS in it for handheld shooting. And right when the yeah. Jello effect was becoming a chic thing for video, hey, <laughs> no people kidding. Were like I want Jello. No, no, it's all Je Jello no, you don't. makes it real. <laughs> <laughs> That's reality right there. Uh, tying back into the dynamic range question, here we're at 200 is what I'm getting and yep. 800 ISO. Uh, Similar pull, performance. Almost pulling the exact it up same, on a exactly. waveform, we're getting the same dynamic range. Uh, exactly. Looking at the two side by side, so yeah, it is living up to that claim. Uh, yeah. But we are seeing tiny bit more noise in 800, as sure. we expect. Uh, yeah. So more in line with what we got at 400 ISO yeah. on the GH5. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, very nice as well, guys. The 240 is awesome. 240 yeah. <laughs> frame per second. It's pretty cool. This so this is a big difference from 180 on the GH5 to 240. Um, and it is a great feature to have, and it certainly gets this camera now in line with a lot of its competition yep. on the market. However, let's also say, well, we do have some samples we're gonna have a look at here. When looking at the slow-mo, what kind of stuff did you find there, Tyler? So again, issues? the motion is phenomenal. That's yep. the one thing I did notice. Um, it represents very, very well. Um, it's very smooth, there's no uh, jittering. There is a little bit of more A when we are okay. looking at that. Um, here again, you've got some samples here. Yeah, so yeah. this is uh, my girlfriend and I on uh, Lake, what was that? This is the one just outside of Banff. Like Minnewanka? Minnewanka. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is just right out of the camera, 709. Um, some speed ramps on it, but again, it's so buttery smooth. So mm. I can see myself using this in a lot of scenarios, especially weddings when you're looking for like that really slow emotional look. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, if you're looking at tight patterns, interview stuff, um, buildings with bricks, it's gonna it's gonna pick up some it's more. It's gonna right? have some issues. Yeah. Um, My friend's a trooper, holy cow. Yeah, I don't know why she agreed to do that, but. <laughs> It wasn't that cold, thankfully. But. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, one thing I want to test as well with the uh, GH5, we found really great results up to 120. Once sure. we got past that, it seemed like it yeah, was exactly. doing some different yeah. interpolation, yep. something like that. Um, so I want to see now if we're getting really beautiful 180, 120. We've mm -hmm. got a lot more testing to do with right. this. Right, does sure. it scale up the 120, 180? That'd be interesting to see. But still, 240 yeah, exactly. is nice to have. It looks nice, but yeah, watch for watch more. And again, what you use it in is the big yeah, thing, exactly. right? Sharpness looks still pretty good, though, at 240. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And if you're worried about the IBIS, uh, just shoot everything slow motion. And it's That's beautiful. Right exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about audio either. You can just get rid of audio. Get yep. rid of, oh, it's Doing this at 240 frames per second. It looks second. so Look good. Like it's not gonna be in, uh, oh, Jordan, oh, break, breaking oh. things. Jordan's breaking things. Uh, I got excited. Uh, Any other questions <laughs> out there, Ron? Hot ticket question. Yeah. yeah. One that's been asked since the beginning. Um, what about the, uh, that autofocus? So that yeah. is the big question we've been waiting for. <laughs> uh, the autofocus has been improved. I mean, we're not talking a massive jump here. I did notice that it doesn't hunt as much. Um, it does pick up a little bit quicker as well. Um, but we're not talking like a monumental jump um, yeah. like it was from the, the four to the five or anything. You basically were saying what you noticed was when it focuses, you don't get that. You don't that, get that, 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 shutter, that quick, that, that shutter exactly. Thing, that's nice, the big thing. That, that did wreck well, well, exactly. Um, yeah, the other thing too is uh, this is very similar to the G9 uh, mm -hmm. system that we've been seeing. Uh, so it looks like a lot of people are already finding out ways to, I'm going to use some internet <laughs> terminology, they found ways to hack the autofocus sure, system. Right. A lot of those same tricks are going to apply to this, yep. like the single point autofocus seems to be the, the way, way to, to go, go for sure. Yeah, right. For a really consistent performance on it. Um, but yeah, not a huge jump up. Um, but what is nice, if you're manually focusing, you touched on the 20 times uh, magnification Big tension time. on it. Uh, the peaking also seemed much more precise with this, hmm. uh, which really surprised me. I mm -hmm. wouldn't expect to see a difference there. And again, the big thing that comes down to with a smaller sensor, all that processing power that was in the GH5 is now able to be put towards all of these other features, like the peaking, right. like the AF. So I mean, there is a trade-off. I mean, smaller sensor, but all the processing helps well, with all these other things. Not smaller sensor, but lower resolution. Sorry, lower resolution, resolution I should sensor, say. Yeah, yeah sorry, Absolutely. I to clarify that. Yeah, else? DFD does seem improved for, well, I guess for video is what mm -hmm. we want to make clear. For yes. stills, exactly. it's still the same, amazing. Yeah. slightly yeah. worse, but you're not going to notice it. And again, in low light, it does say that it's it's one, one EV better yeah, in low minus light. Minus 4 to minus 5 exactly. EV on the GH5 to GH5S. Yeah, and that does depend on contrast. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. So. Still incredible in low yeah. light, yeah. So wear like a black-white combination. This like is this, this is awesome. what you want yeah. to focus yeah. on right here, <laughs> with targets on it, and, and basically wear a resolution chart. If, yeah, if you can just get <laughs> a back focus calibration chart. <laughs> that's perfect. Anything else coming in there, Rob? No. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 they do this all the time. There's things going on no, there behind they're, they're, the... I wish you could see what we're seeing right now. Lots of conversations. Okay. Right now. But um, what about that ISO, that dual, uh, dual, negative. dual negative ISO? Dual native, dual native ISO. ISO. Yeah, so we have talked about that, yep. So how it works, what I've been explained, is that there's two analog circuits within the camera. So traditionally, if your base ISO would obviously be 200 on the, the GH5, uh, what that does is as you increase your ISO, it's just the, the signal to the, the sensor being increased in increasing noise as we go. Just amplification. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what this does is instead of amplifying it from that base uh, circuit, they've actually included a second analog circuit, which the camera cuts to. So that's actually what the base has been set at. So that's your base from, from the increase at this point. So it's the same circuit essentially, but it's just been tweaked to be that. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a yeah. scientist. I don't know if you're aware. But <laughs> you're not? Scientists don't do wedding photography? Scientists don't live in Aurelia is the thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is something that we've seen, for example, the D5 was torn apart for this because yep. it right. had the amplification going at quite high ISOs. For sure. So you had no dynamic range at low ISOs until you got up into the higher ones. It was mm -hmm. kind of the reverse. Then you yeah. gain that Which path. is strange, yeah. If you do the dual ISO thing, you've got the best of both worlds. Your yeah, low exactly. ISO when you're out there, it's very clean. Or if you're looking for similar performance to the GH5, if sure. I were matching with the GH5, I'd shoot everything at the 800 yeah. ISO setting. It for sure. very similar, even though it's a stop more sensitive. But again, just to clarify for everybody, it effectively means you're going to have similar dynamic range at both of these ISOs. Uh, it also means that you... Um, yeah, you have different options as far as dealing with exposure for videography, whether it's bright outside or dark inside. Yeah, exactly. From a photographic standpoint, this isn't really going to make any difference, no. uh, really, and not in a big way. And low light performance overall is, is improved throughout the entire range. And the other thing that's cool is in the menus, right on the top of the um, operations page now, we've got dual ISO, auto, or you can select the, the minimum the high, yeah. amplification or the high uh, yeah. gain. So if you're not shooting V-Log, for the most part, throw it on auto and ignore exactly. that. As you start to ramp up, it's going to switch over between the two. You'll get cleaner images, but exactly. there's no 
thinking, mm-hmm. which is what I'm trying to avoid, is thinking. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, like, shooting real estate videos is something I do as well. So when I'm doing a tracking shot with my Ronin, um, being able to set it on auto ISO, going from outside with an ND filter inside, it's going to adjust from that lower circuit up to the 800 circuit and get that same sort of uh, ring, uh, noise yeah. going interior. Absolutely. Yeah. And we should mention too, um, what I found, again, this is pre-production, if I was on the low setting, uh, in a single take, it would only work within that ISO range. Yes. So if I started at 200, go inside, and it needs to push to 1600, mm-hmm. it'll only be able to go up to 800 ISO until exactly. you cut, it'll switch. We don't know if that's going to be the case in the final sure. version. Now, we're on, while we're on the topic of differences here too, um, let's talk about frame rates, standard frame rates, because there is a difference there. I mean, the GH5, uh, we, we got Cinema 4K, but it was at 24 frames per second, yeah, exactly. which we happen to love, yep. but which a lot of clients might not love. No, which exactly. A lot, you know, a lot of things that want 30 or even higher. And of course, 60 now is becoming the big push. Yeah, exactly. so, so one of the big changes on the GH5S, we now get Cinema 4K. We get that at 30 frames per second. Yep. And we also get it at 60 at frames, 60 a, second. frames a second. So we have it. 60 frames per second internally yeah. at 8 bit, okay? Yeah. And we should say that because there's a lot There's a lot saying. of weird things going on on the internet about rumors saying that it can shoot 60 at 10 bit, 422 internal, which would be insane and awesome. That might happen in the future, who we knows? We never know. We can't, we can't uh, say anything yeah. to that. But it does shoot 60 externally to 422 10 bit at cinema 4K. So that is a huge feat for, again, a camera yeah. of this size. A lot of the cinema shooters, again, are going to be shooting to an external recorder like a Shogun or yeah. anything like that, right? So that is a huge offering to, to And again, have. 24 and 30 frames per second now, you you get 10 bit for internal, internal yeah, exactly. which is one of the most amazing things about the GH5 and now GH5. Exactly. Yeah. And what we noticed as well, the 4K60 at 8 bit is beautiful. It These is. cameras have always. It's unbelievable. I shoot more than I expected to <laughs> in 8 bit with the GH5. Yeah. Sure. Um, because if I'm not going to do any heavy grading, if I'm not shooting log, exactly. the image is almost identical. It's really lovely. Um, mm-hmm. So with this guy, you know, if you're shooting log, that's going to be a nice bump for you. I mean, mm-hmm. You might want to grab the external recorder for that. But if you're shooting the 709 like profile, it's so, so just jump exactly. over to 4K60, shoot some lovely slow mo, or if you're one of those people who shoots your project. <laughs> at 60 frames per second, Tony and Chelsea, then now you've got that option as well. Um, Who would do that? Who would do such a thing? Some of our good friends. Just (laughs) those two plus like 80% of the rest of the world. Okay, there we go. We are the Luddites. (laughs) Who shoots 24 anymore, right? I know. Well, considering what the base of of that is, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Has the internal audio improved? I would say personally yes, because of one reason, that's the IBIS. Um, We don't have the IBIS on there, we don't need that noise reducing microphone that was in the GH5. Um, I have noticed, again, any of the shooting that I did with the the Johnson Canyon, that was done with just the internal microphone. Um, You're getting some really good bass, some good uh, fidelity out of it. it. Because we don't have the the moving sensor that has to be canceled out. Yeah, yeah. The they other still cool have the mic port though up. I know it needs to go up in the front. Well, the, yeah, and they still have the, the mic jack <laughs> up that, here, sorry, yeah. but then they've got the headphone jack still where the uh, door is going to hit. Yeah. yeah, I mean they basically want to use the same body design. So exactly. Unfortunately, that is you can factor. see it's so close. It's if that was just like a just tiny a, bit. Just move the screw. Just move yeah. the screw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're still not going. You're going to have to pull your headphones out if you want to sure. really flip your screen around. But again, again, it's this. It's the same body as the GH5. It's a design and engineering standpoint. There are a couple cool tweaks to the audio on this. The first one is it now has a camera operation filter. So uh, it, uh, of course, there's no IBIS in that, which made a variety of frequencies. With the lenses now, they all make the same basic sound. So it'll eliminate that frequency in your recording, which is cool. The other thing is now we've got a line input. So if you want to kick an audio feed straight off a soundboard right into camera, if you were using a GH5 or any other basically any other mirrorless or DSLR at this point, yeah. it'll peak like crazy yeah, and you'll have terrible audio. Won't be enough. Yeah. Um, so now you got a line in, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they also have the option to run power from a mini phone signal, uh, mm-hmm. which is pretty sweet too. So if you're using a Rode Video Micro, things like that, a exactly. right. little it's bit more powered. kick coming off of it. Uh, which and is of course, cool. still the standard XLR adapter on the GH5. Yep. Which, which we love. Which I love, love. It. It's great. I know. So yeah. good. Yeah. Changed my game. I get, get rid of that giant Tascam unit that hangs below. Yeah. <laughs> Battery life. Um, and we always enjoyed the battery life on the GH5. Yes. The GH5S says higher stats there. Absolutely. Again, it's so hard to really test how yeah. accurate that is, what situations. Is that because there's no IBIS on now and that's where the extra battery life comes from? I think that's it. I yeah. really do. I mean, that's our, well, we turned IBIS off on our live shows yeah. and we got a dramatic improvement in battery yeah. life. For sure. And you have to consider, too, that 
turning the IBIS off still has to keep the sensor stable sure. because it still is a floating sensor, right? But right. it is a massive increase. Um, sorry, from the GH4 to the GH5, people did notice a decrease, obviously, because of that. Yeah. So to, to reduce it completely, you're going to get an increase on this guy. It's hard to see. We're going to test this out as yeah. we go through, but it looks like battery life is slightly better. Yeah, we also found 8-bit recording, better battery life than Big 10. Time, yeah. So uh, if, you, if that is a concern for you, doing longer stuff, just remember, cycle data over. Sure. Um, away you go. We have a question. Is, uh, is the viewfinder any prettier? It's exactly the same viewfinder as the Which G9. is our favorite viewfinder. Which I it love. Is so that's viewfinder. Until the G9. I love the G9s, i got to say. Yeah. Yeah. But this thing, yeah, from a video standpoint, this thing is sharp as can be. Um, the eye cup's great. Um, I've been able to pull focus on it no problem with all, yeah, all my sweet. vintage lenses in these. Um, any time code improvements? Yes, that is one of the coolest things that they've added to this. Um, there's a full time code uh, port now, actually. So it just goes into your sync port. Um, which, I, as soon as yep, I take that off, it's yep. going to be gone forever, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's actually a little dongle that comes with the camera when you purchase it, and it plugs into there that gives you your standard uh, in and out time code sync, so you can be using this on full productions with your EVA1 or really any production camera. Right. What else is really sweet with that is it also carries through the HDMI. Which so is I've awesome, got someone yeah. right now who's having a huge pain. They're kicking their HDMI signal out of this guy into an Atomos to get yep. the 10-bit 4K60, but that kills your time code exactly, signal out yeah. of its HDMI out, uh, so you can't run it through an external audio recorder sure. or anything like that. With this, you could do time code for audio and roll right your time the code video out. You could win on both sides. It's pretty sweet, um, and I'm surprised we haven't seen it from any other camera manufacturers. Smart, smart Panasonic. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> can it be USB powered like the G9? Yes. yes, it can. Uh, it will not charge while you're plugged into USB power but and rolling, power but uh, you can power it through it. So if you've got cell phone charging brick, anything like that, away you go. So uh, for concerts and stuff like that, events, it's going to be a huge asset. Long form actually. recording. Doing, say, a live show if you didn't exactly. want to plug into mains power, <laughs> it'd yeah. be great. Do we get a clean HDMI out? Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, I like those one word answer <laughs> questions. <laughs> More yes. of those, please. <laughs> Uh, can, yes, I can ask about any vignetting with any lenses that you might have noticed with multi-aspect ratio. Hey, no, that's a no. good question. Uh, again, we haven't really had a chance to test it yeah. too, too much, but that's something, again, no, knowing that, I can definitely put it through some tests because I know with the GH2 that was that was a big was thing was issue, there was yeah. some vignetting when you were using like maybe C-mount lenses or some of the ones that... Yeah, I, mean, um, uh, I've, I have been using the... Um, APS-C lenses yep. with a booster on this, uh, which is generally when we'd see a lot of vignetting. Daytime, yeah. uh, and I haven't run into it with the GH5 in stills yet. Okay. Uh, in right. stills is where it's most demanding. Yes, exactly. Daytime, if you're doing yeah. any of the wide stuff, you lose the corners, yep. it's less of a concern. Yeah. Uh, so we'll test that more. Again, we haven't had too much time with this. I haven't taken it out into the world because I'm afraid of Casey Neistatting this camera. <laughs> <laughs> so cover that red, cover that yeah. red. And it is that. a distinct red uh, <laughs> button for sure, yeah. Do you think we're going to have any issues as far as um, uh, crop factors changing at all in video? Is it Not all that I know of. Uh, yeah. yeah. One thing to note, the 240 frame per second, there is a crop. Okay. So when you're actually going through the menu and you're setting your uh, variable frame rate, it does pop up and say crop on or crop off. As you get to the 240, it says crop on. So that's really the only place that you'll notice a crop. Okay. Everything else is still the same the two times. At what point does the crop stop? I haven't that's I a good didn't question. actually check that. I'm going to do a quick little check Oh, I'm here. holding a camera too. I could have also looked at that. Crazy, eh? <laughs> it's so weird. I'm already set up into it. It's, it's very strange how that worked out. <laughs> manual movie mode. <laughs> And let's go to, oh, I'm not even manual mood. How do you feel about this big new red button? Um, I'm torn about it. Oh, oh lose yeah? it at 180. 180. 180 okay. um, again, I think it's just to differentiate it that it's, this is a prime camera. This is for a niche it's market. It's sexy bling, that's for it sure. It is sexy bling. Yeah. I mean, you got to match the S to something on the camera, and Panasonic right? is going with this it's new all red about color accents. scheme. Yeah, red <laughs> Same with the G9, scheme. too. Um, it's a great color of red. <laughs> We're stealing the HDMI. We're stealing the HDMI. Oh, They're going, going to try and do something. We're, We're going to break my computer. Right. <laughs> is is the is the grip the same as the GH5? Exactly the same. Yeah. same so it's the exact grip. same yeah. body, right. yeah. uh, cool. just with a new sensor. And you will notice the camera. Well, you may notice the camera is slightly lighter. I think it's just over 100 grams. So you know, it's to me, it felt huge, like a huge difference. But again, that's because I've just Tyler been lifting it for so long. Hands. Sensitive, sensitive hands. hands. I moisturize. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, back pain in sensitive hands makes you appreciate. There you go. Grams. Any anamorphic differences from the GH5? There's the big oh, one. Oh, we were going to do that. Yes, yeah, uh, so I was asking, <laughs> and I was cut off. And we got pulled away. Quite you. Uh, so 
So we still have 4K anamorphic on this because it yeah. is a 4x3 sensor, but yeah. we lose the 6K anamorphic because sure. there's not enough pixels on this chip for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or what you can also do if you're shooting with the GH5, I love that you can shoot 4x3 6K video. Which if is you crazy. like that, app. if you want to go make Dunkirk, um, there you go. Boxy 4.3, you can do it with that. Yeah. With this, you'll be restricted to 4K. Um, for, for the sake of my own curiosity, we're going to kick out to HD my here. Okay. okay. No apparent reason other than I want to. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I, hopefully at proper frame rates yeah. and shutter speeds. <laughs> and and let's put color. it at 15 frames per second <laughs> at 6 bit. <laughs> That's a thing. I've so, never heard of people oh having an issue goodness. experimenting during a live show. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and video is easy. Anybody could do it. Anybody. <laughs> Even Drew. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the head shake was a great sign. Yeah. Um, we have well, faith in him. We have faith in him. He's going he's gonna to do it. He's going to uh, get it. Yeah, so anamorphic. It also means if you're a photographer, you're going to lose those 6K photo modes yep. as well, the 18 yeah. megapixels. 6K photo modes um, are gone. Uh, on that same topic, actually, I did uh, shoot a few resolution tests between the GH5 and mm -hmm. the GH5S, and we are seeing it's still a hair sharper on the GH5, which yep. makes sense because it's super sampling. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that means we get worse rolling shutter, like but hyper. slightly sharper image. Exactly. So if absolute resolution is still the most important yeah, thing sure. for yeah. you, then the GH5 so is still, still going to be the camera to go to. Um, the S is a little more specialized, but I've said it before, I'll say it again. Resolution in video is not the most important no, thing. No, it's it overrated. Isn't. It absolutely yeah. is. So, we're, we're so we are kicking out. Hey. Okay, I'll look over there. There's, hello, YouTube. <laughs> uh, once again, from a different... Roll level. that shutter. Hey, here's, a, here's an idea. Uh, of yeah. course, we're streaming at lower resolution, but why don't you stop down, crank that ISO up a little bit, and see how we're, how we're doing over there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, give me a sec. All right, they're working on it, guys. Yeah, um, this will not in any way be indicative of the final image quality. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we're it's a low right resolution now, stream. Think, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, just for fun, let's see what let's the low see what it can do. is really like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions there while Ron's doing stuff, Drew? Or Gary? They're switching all over the place. Can someone sing us a song at that mic? Anything else that you want to mention on here? What have we, um, what have we not talked about? We've covered a fair amount. Oh, is this fun? I guess all the accessories are going to still. Um, Fit, like your battery grips and everything right. like that, um, the XLR. Uh, 400 megabit per second is still retained yeah, the four, here. It's, yeah. Again, it's the same thing. You're st still getting all the same bit rates plus the, the new 60 uh, Cinema 4K. Um, yeah, still get the, the same uh, card slots. Everything else has been the same as far as I can tell. Um, yeah. Oh, Ron, are you having success? Cut. Great. All right. All right. <laughs> I, hope that was, I hope that was transcendent. We're here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. What so ISO are we shooting at now, Ron? 100, uh, 128,000. 128,000. Oh. That yeah. seems excessive. Uh, 12,800. 12, I would imagine. 12,800. 12, okay. There's, so no zeros around here. there's no 128,000 ISO on this camera. It is, uh, <laughs> yeah, 51,200 is our. It is 128,000. <laughs> <laughs> 12,800 ISO. Fired. Yeah. <laughs> How do we look? Pretty bad? Pretty bad. Pretty yeah, bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's ra you go something a little more rational. Why don't we just see what uh, 6400 6, is going to look like? Yeah. Now, uh, again, Tyler, you and, say, and, sorry, you've said you had a really good success at 6400. Absolutely. 6400 is what I shot most of that uh, Johnson Canyon video at. I was up to 8000 and 12800 as well. But again, I was I, like I said, I stopped down just so I could get those those uh, those ISOs. Mm, yeah. And it's very usable for what uh, what I do. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we out on that guy? Yeah, we're at 6,400. Awesome. Cool. Let's take a few, a few more questions. A few more yeah. questions while we're doing an ISO ramp up here, guys. Uh, Anything yeah, coming in? Can, can oh, right. Drew's going to do questions? Drew's right. going to do questions. Can we uh, Let's talk, talk about color science. Let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Are, uh, Let's talk about yeah, color, color science. science. All right. So the yeah, GH5 singing. was a nice improvement over the 4 uh, in terms of color science, but we noticed very different color coming out of the G9 and the EVA 1. Absolutely. Um, this is closer to the EVA 1 mm -hmm. is kind of what we found, uh, especially in terms of how it handles magentas. It's a okay. little more, little more Canon-esque. Yes. Uh, Mid-tone magentas are pushed a little harder. Um, so killer B cam for the evil one. It's going to match very, very well. But you may want to either put a little negative magenta uh, in this guy or boost it up on your GH5 sure. if mm -hmm. you're looking to match those two cameras together. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see color profiles come out Absolutely. once these are here uh, to match them. And of course, LUTs as well for matching yep. those two together. But it was a very simple adjustment. I would say maybe I was doing like a 3% increase on yeah, the magenta. Nothing the serious, right? Yeah. Uh, so they'll match quite nicely. And Gordon Lang just did a very detailed review of the G9, which we have not done. We're still waiting on our, so our camera on Final Firmware. But uh, he said that this is among the nicest 
in camera color that he's seen mm, out of a camera. Sure. He says they're definitely in you they know put some in Canon work Nikon in it, land right, right now. Uh, so we're going to see that same color science carried on yep. over to this. It's obviously no coincidence that this is being released very close to the evil one. Yep. And and do you see this as a great um, companion camera to something larger like the evil I one? I do, absolutely. I mean, the EVA one isn't a huge camera to begin with. I mean, no. it's somewhere in between, like, if we're talking light. Sony, the FS5, FS7. It's somewhere in that middle range. But you can't mount that thing everywhere. And again, the cost, you're not going to put that thing on a car. You're not going to put that thing up in the air. Think about this as a drone camera, being able to get that same color science, that same sort of uh, dynamic range up in the air without having to get a massive sized drone right. too. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a, gr a great camera to kind of assist with that, I think. Yeah, cool. and I remember when we were shooting uh, a couple of years ago, I was working on a short film where it was a lot of tight spaces yeah. and we were using the smaller cameras just out of necessity for that. Exactly. We couldn't physically jam yeah. an FS7 in the space. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so for that, this is going to be great because yep. they will cut together beautifully yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and especially with the 800 on the EVA 1, 800 on here, you actually have matching ISOs Perfectly, as well. Perfectly, exactly. So. Uh, it should be really beautiful. All right, Ron, any other questions there people are wondering about? Uh, any improvement in Wi-Fi video stream more than 480p? Uh, I haven't tested that, that actually that's yet, so question. that's a good question. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. We were streaming off of it, so you'll probably see it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't Wi-Fi, we should point no, out. No, the yeah, Wi-Fi was, was, that was that a tethered was, connection. Was I guess the question is for monitoring, right? Like when yeah. you're using the Wi-Fi app. Yeah, uh, I will say again, Panasonic has the best, it I does. would say, built-in app. Um, right, it does. You can do everything that the camera is capable of, adjust focus, things like that, uh, check and magnify, and that does carry over to this. So if, you, if I were to throw any camera on a jib without any cable, uh, it would be a Panasonic GH5 or 5S for sure. I do that in a lot of event shooting as well, too. Oh, um, I mean, I have to have a separate phone for each. I'm hoping one day on the road we can do multiple cameras. And yep. it's wishful thinking, I mean, for what, what it does, again. But, I mean, I put it up on an 8-foot jib behind the, the stage so that I could get that kind of, like, big crowd shot looking forward. Yep. And I'm sitting at the back shooting, monitoring from my phone. It's, uh, and then you can be like, cool. oh, I think that drunk guy just walked into my camera there. You <laughs> exactly. can pull your phone up, like, oh, no, it's still good. Exactly. Or i got to walk over and fix that. I don't know what, if we covered it, but what codex does it come with? Shit. Sorry? Uh, what codex? Um, so all the same ones as the GH5. Um, okay. You're getting your 400 megabit per second all intra. Um, you're getting your 150 megabits IPV, 10 bit. Um, you're also getting V-Log installed on the camera like the we camera. talked about earlier. So again, this is a cinematographer's camera. It's built for that. It's got everything you need to go right out of the box. And the wrappers on that are still MP4 yep. and MOV. Uh, That's correct. So yeah. it works really well with a Premiere Resolve workflow as well as the Final Cut workflow. Yep. For Did you notice back. any difference in editing as far as... Uh, um, Actually, I would, again, I can't really tell because I'm on my laptop while I'm gone and it, it died, so I'm running it off of a, a hacked, kind of put together system right now. But I found that the 10 bit 422, uh, 100 meg, uh, excuse me, 150 megabit files seem to play smoother than my GH5. Oh, I don't know if that is just based on the system that I'm using, but my home system sometimes has tr uh, trouble playing the system, so the f or playing the files. So the fact that my laptop's doing a little bit better, um, maybe there's something going on there. I haven't tested it enough yet, though. The other thing I should point out for people who are in Final Cut land is 10.4 is out now, which is optimized for 10-bit yes, out of awesome. the... So we are, it's still not buttery smooth like the 8-bit no, on no. my laptop, which is ancient now, sure. but it's, it's usable. We're actually getting all right playback awesome. on it. So uh, we're seeing things move in that direction. What you won't see anymore is H.265 because that was specifically used for any of the 6K, 6K modes, which are missing on this guy now. So we have a little bit of time left. And of course, if folks have questions, definitely let us know. But why don't we start uh, talk? well, why don't we get into the conversation of who is this camera really for? I sure. mean, you know, who's the kind of person who's going to want this camera? Yep. Why would you go GH5? Why would you go this way? Absolutely. Um, what do you think, Todd? I mean, I have a list of, I mean, at first, when I first got this camera, I thought this list was going to be quite small. Uh, the more and more I've used it, that list has gotten bigger and bigger. Okay. Um, we're looking at event shooters for one. I mean, we're talking like from a small up to the big. I'm thinking event shooters shooting live music events, like concerts and stuff. Right. Imagine being able to shoot with 20 of these cameras with multiple angles as opposed to one or two other cameras. The quality is going to be there as, as well as the big cameras, right? Um, with wedding videographers, this is going to be another big thing. Um, I used to shoot on rigs for everything. Going to the GH5 with a stabilizer made me get rid of kind of all my stabilization systems, but I still have them. So being able to use this and load it late again is going to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. Then we get up to like music videos, short films, even like large film productions. This camera is going to work so, so well for that because of the dynamic range and the codex that it comes with. Well, I know I'm looking at a short film this summer sure. uh, that we're really talking about shooting on the EVA 1 right yep. now. 
Uh, this camera is going to make that decision a lot easier, a easier in yeah. case we run into those same situations as the last one mm -hmm. I worked on where we're in those tight spaces. Yep. We need that compact body. Mm -hmm. Or honestly, uh, with the EVA 1, it's got a big Canon EF mount on it, sure. so I can't use speed boosters. No. Uh, so with this guy, I can throw a Sigma 1835 1.8 on, get one to a beautiful 800 ISO. Sure. This might even be a better low light camera than the EVA 1 with a much larger Just sensor based on in that, that exactly. situation. Yeah. Interesting. Do you see, you know, if we couple this camera, like why would the GH5 still be something you want to hold on to? Okay. If you're if you're a cinematographer. Big time. You know, I mean that's kind of the question is do I really just say, okay, GH5 is great for video, so is this camera, but do I still need the GH5? Yep. And personally I think they're gonna complement each other very well. Um, that's the big thing is this doesn't have the stabilizer. For the times that I really want to run and gun, take the camera out just with a lens in a in a body, I'm gonna go to the GH5. I mean that's right. what it is. And for really, really low light shots, for those times I really want to get a cinematic image out of the camera, I'm probably going to go to this thing on a rig of some sort, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what it comes down to. There's, well, then, there, there's a question. W would you want to use a GH5 or would you rather use this with something like a gimbal? Again, that comes down to the user. I don't like using the big rigs and stuff like that, but I'm also not a cinema shooter per se. Like, I don't shoot a lot of music videos and, and films and stuff like that. Most of the stuff I do is running gun event type work. So the GH5 for me is, per, is personally my choice. I also shoot a lot of photography. I'm a, a photographer as well with the GH5. So right. having everything in one camera system is what I would like. Yeah. This one here, it's, I'm gonna have it in my bag just for like shooting weddings and stuff like that. The low light receptions, um, the, the first dances and stuff. Being able to shoot that at 800 ISO clean all the way up if I have to is gonna be pretty cool. And I do think. some 240 as well. Exactly. But this is definitely gonna be at home on the movie set or yep, in a exactly. more controlled situation. That's where I see this thing absolutely shining. Yeah, yeah I think the IBIS is what's going to keep the GH5 really current. And as well, if you have any interest in anamorphic or square format video, that's also still going to yeah, be you your choice that 6K, for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but certainly, I could see uses for Camera Store TV, you know, doing a lot of low-lit interiors, stuff sure. like so that. So there's a question, where would we use this on Camera Store TV? Uh, I mean, night shoots specifically, where we've started using the GH5 more, mm -hmm. sunrise, sunset, shoots, things like that. I think it would make a ton of sense for yep. those. Um, but also, I love that lower native ISO. So midday right. shooting, if I'm not shooting handheld, this is probably going to be the camera that yep. I'm going to grab for that. Because uh, I am getting you know, a less noisy image, especially in the shadows with that. More, more, filters. More, <laughs> usa more usable vlog. I don't have to use as many filters, yeah. which is As many, sweet. which is good. Uh, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of benefits in that. And the 240 frame, if we're doing any slow-mo mucky-mucking around, oh. this is going to be the camera for Looks that. like we're back to an MVM 500A monopod. Uh, slash <laughs> gimbal from now on. Yeah. yeah. We're uh, back. Four Thirds Rumors has just asked a very pressing question. Oh. Um, oh. Will there in the future be a GH5R where the R stands for resolution? <laughs> I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. All but I had this weird sense that this question would probably I know. Come it, was, <laughs> it was weird when, when we first saw this at GH5S <laughs> and you're like, really? Like, you know, yep. Sony already did that. The template's definitely there. I mm -hmm. think the G9 is the GH5R uh, because it's the only one with the pixel shift right now. Exactly. Uh, right. If you want to get those ultra high resolution files and way more usable pixel shift than a Sony A7R3, uh, but who knows? The answer's no. The, the answer's, answer's no. 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 Yeah. And again, no. you got to keep in mind who this camera's for. And yes. if you're shooting for large, large commercial projects where you need large megapixels, you're going to go full frame whether or not this is an option, right? I used to f shoot 5D Mark III for weddings. I've recently sold it off to go with the GH5, mainly because I don't need that many no. megapixels. I don't need full frame for what I do, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, 20 megapixels is more than enough for 99% of the work that I'm going to be doing. Cool. Um, we're going to wrap it up here, guys. Yeah. Um, I do want to say the GH5S, if you're in Canada, is available for pre-order now on yeah. thecamerastore.com. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll also be back this Saturday with another live show. Yeah, we are back this Saturday, so don't be thrown off by the fact that we're doing this. This yeah. is an impromptu one for the No, release. we're going to make all these guys yeah. back here work twice this week. Price roughly, I mean, we're looking at about 2700 Canadian for the GH5. Mm -hmm. For the GH5S, we're about 33 34 33 Now it's body only, no kit. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, we should mention that as well. Yeah, and uh, remember that does include the V-Log. Yeah, you're not paying exactly. 180 bucks, 150 bucks for V-Log. Yeah. Yeah. So when you really break it down, we're not looking at a serious increase to the GH5 for what you're uh, you're getting as an increase in uh in image quality. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? Any other on? questions? Hopefully we answered uh, I think yeah. a lot of stuff covered. <laughs> Any difference in more? Uh, not uh, that I've noticed except for the 240 mode. mode, exactly. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, we're talking like subsampling at that point, but it is a crop mode, so there is going to be some somewhere there. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, at full frames. I mean, some people are reporting more A online. I've never run into it no. with the 24, the 30 frame yeah. modes, and we shot resolution charts with it. Yeah. And we're also uh, talking there's no subsampling happening with the sensor. This is no. a full readout from the sensor. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so with the super sampling of the five, it could potentially yep. happen. But I haven't seen I think it either. It's <laughs> I think it's a lot of people watching stuff on YouTube. You know, and in a photo yeah. still at 10 megapixels, you might get <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Is there an AA filter on this? I have no idea. That's uh, trash. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rob do, Rob, do we have an AA filter on this? I don't think, I think so it's stripped. Sensor. I would imagine now it's there, stripped. There was yeah. something I was reading about that there is some sort of... Uh, uh, glare reducing filter put onto it. Um, oh, okay, sweet. I'll be able, yeah, we'll be able to Let's get some more information out. As soon as we cut, we'll go shoot into the that sun. That maintains That'll be great. the mystery, right? So that you'll come back and watch our review when we actually do that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for no, tuning in, guys. Any other questions? Oh, no, 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 we're done. That's all. everything. Perfect. Perfect. Gary's phone's about to melt. So. <laughs> yeah, we've been tethering off Gary's right. phone for this well, whole thing. Well, we should say, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Tyler, thanks to thank Gary's you. phone. Thank you very much for having me, Thank guys. you so much for having, yep. uh, you know, being with us here and talking about the camera. And, uh, yeah, look forward to a review. We'll have one out shortly, hopefully with the wood nickels. Yep. Oh, we're working on it.